there and welcome to another beautiful and exciting episode of Science of the Gospel. My name is Buki Bash and I am your host on the show. If you're just hitting this show for the very first time and you are wondering what the show is about, now this is the show where we get to talk about science facts and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring the science facts like we know it in the lab, in the textbooks, and we bring it with the word of God in a way that you can understand. And every week we come with exciting topics. So right now we're gonna be taking a wonderful topic, but we're gonna take a short break. And when we return, we will get into the topic of the day. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of a Gospel. And if you're just tuning in, you are right on time. We're just about to get into what we're going to be talking about today. So this is the right time for you to call your friends, tell your friends that Buki Bash is live. She's a love on XP. If you're interested in Science of the Gospel, this is the time to watch. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about the digestive system. And now I have, be I have started to infuse physical science and social sciences because social sciences is more about um, the mind, human behavior, and also even economics, finances, and you know, so many areas. Science is a very, very broad you know, aspect of life, and this is science of the gospel. So today on science of the gospel, we're looking at the digestive system in terms of the physical side of science, and then we're also going to look at it in terms of mind the social part of it. So first of all, let's just get straight into talking about the digestive system. If you've been following science of the gospel, you would have remembered our topic on human nutrition. Yes, when the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So now talking about the digestive system, we're taking the understanding of food to another level and understanding that the digestive system is inside of you for a purpose, is inside of you for a reason, to help to break down the food that you consume in a way that it can be of benefit to your body, in a way that it can become a part of you. So the digestive system is important to your being, is important to your essence. Now let's look at the physical digestive system. Now digestion begins from the oral cavity. The moment you put the food in your mouth, digestion of carbohydrate begins. So the other ones begin, some others begin in the stomach, some others begin in the intestine. But the moment you put food into your mouth, some of it is already absorbed into your system. Have you ever had that experience when you haven't eaten all day and then you just take a plate of food and the moment you put that food in your mouth, within seconds, you already feel like you have some energy. What happened? At that point, some energy is already absorbed just by that one spoon that you are taking. And then when the, when the food goes through the entire digestive system, it breaks down the carbohydrates, it breaks down the protein to amino acids, it breaks down the fats and oil to fatty acids and 
glycerol. Everything now becomes part of your system. The waste goes out and then you pass it out as feces or urine. But the part that nourishes your body comes and becomes a part of your body. And then it enters your muscles, it enters your blood, it enters, in fact, it becomes you. That shows us something. That teaches us something. You, you can make reference to our, our, our episode on science of the gospel when I spoke about human nutrition. Let us bring it to the mind. When you, when you get information, that is food. That's a kind of nutrition. So that is actually going to go through a, a, some sort of a digestive process. And when I spoke about human nutrition, I said the digestive process is meditation. And... The, 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 the important or the significant thing about the digestive system is the fact that, first of, there is a word often used that, and because one uses it interchangeably in language, people often think it's the same, and it's not the same. And understanding the role of the digestive system would actually make you understand the difference between these two words. Because one of the words is like food, then the other word is like nutrition. So we say food and nutrition. So one is food, the other is nutrition. Food is actually the one that you eat. The nutrition is the one that nourishes your body because not everything that you eat actually nourishes your body. Some things just go into your digestive system and they pass out, they don't nourish your body. So there is food, and then there is nutrition. And it is because of the nutrition that is why you eat the food. So the purpose for the food is because of the nutrition. It is because it's going to nourish you. In fact, that's part of the reasons why we eat. But people eat for different reasons, but that's not the topic for today. <laughs> that's probably topic for another day. But one of the, the very fundamental reasons for food is so that your body can be nourished. Now, there is food and there is nutrition. Now, the same way there is food and nutrition. It's the same way there is information and then there is knowledge. The reason for information is so that you can have knowledge. But because you have information doesn't mean you have knowledge. Hmm. Some of you may be hearing that for the very first time, but it's true. Because let, let's take it back to the digestive system. You have eaten. The food has digested. But have you been nourished? Sometimes, for some people, the food doesn't even digest. They even just vomit it immediately. For some people, the, the, food, the, the food that they are eating is not even, is not rich in nutrients. So the nourishment that they are getting is not even enough, even though their digestive system is working very well. So understanding this, because we really need to bring it to our real life and our everyday life and how it affects us. Because the essence of knowing science, the essence of understanding science is to Get, the, get, get everything that it has to offer so that our lives can be better, so that the quality of our lives can improve. And that's the essence of the studies. So, bring, and even bringing it to, into the light of God's word and bringing the light of God's word to it makes it even perfect because the word of God made everything. So we have to understand things for what they really, really are. So now, talking about the digestive system, the digestive system breaks down the food so that we can have nourishment. Remember I said, the goal is the nourishment, it's not the food. A lot of people are big on information. Information is food. In fact, a lot of people have, don't have any doubts about it. We, we spoke about it in our episode of Food and Nutrition, where we're talking about food and nutrition in, in Science of the Gospel. So information is food. But the question is, what kind of food is it? Is it food with nourishment? And even if it has nourishment, what kind of nourishment does it even have? And even if it has nourishment, do, is your body able to absorb the nourishment? Because it's actually not everything that you consume that your digestive system can absorb because of the way your, the, the digestive system of the human is designed. For the ruminant animal, for example, their digestive system is different because of the kind of food that was designed for them to consume. They, they, they have one stomach and then they bring it out and then they redigest it into another stomach. Their digestive system is different. So as a human being, your digestive system is different because of the kind of food you consume. Because we, we consume cooked food and then it's processed to an extent. And even when we consume fresh foods 
of course, they have nourishments and a lot of them, the, the, the nutrients are still very fresh. They are not destroyed because even in the process of cooking, the heat and some of the chemicals that interact with this food when we cook, they destroy some of the, 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 the chemical composition of the food. But nonetheless, even after the process, we still get nourished with the food. But then, if the food that you eat is unable to digest, it will just pass out and it will be as though you ate nothing. In fact, the person at that point will be suffering from malnutrition. Malnutrition. And the reason why I'm zooming in and focusing on this is because a lot of people are big on information. All you need is information. All you need is information. All information, information. Information is not knowledge. What information becomes is knowledge. We're going to go on a short break, and I'm going to dive deeper into how information becomes knowledge. Stay with us. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel, and we have been talking about the digestive system and the essence and importance of the digestive system. And I was, I was just about to tell you the difference between information and knowledge and why it's important for us to know the difference. Information is food, but knowledge is nutrients. Knowledge it was, is what makes you become. Knowledge is what makes you grow. Knowledge is what makes you mature, not information. It is the nutrients in the food that makes you grow. It is the nutrients in the food that makes you mature. It is the nutrients in the food that makes any difference in your physical body. It's the same way with knowledge. Information becomes knowledge after it has been digested and processed. Now, depending on the kind of information it is, that will determine what kind of nutrients you will get. Not all information has the best nutrients for you. It is not every food you eat that has nutrients. Someone said one day that if you are eating, if you are eating cow skin, it has no nutrients. It is food. You would be satisfied in your tummy. In fact, it would digest, but there will be no nutritional benefit. So there, there are some kind of information that, it, even though you have digested the information, it has no impact in your maturity, in your growth, mentally, spiritually, but you have consumed it. And you have worked your digestive system unnecessarily. And it has just come out of your system as nothing. So now, information that you ruminate on, that you digest, that you meditate on, becomes knowledge and when it becomes knowledge that is when it can impact your life affect your life make a difference information comes to people every day for example a very very popular one well 
well, th this is actually has been on quite for some time where they do an advert because these days I have, I've not noticed it recently where they do an advert for a cigarette and they say smokers are liable to die young and don't smoke is not good to smoke and all that people are still smoking is information so because information is just information the information that has not been digested it doesn't have any impact on your decision it doesn't have any impact on your choices it doesn't have any impact on your life it's just information it's not knowledge you don't, know, you don't know something until that thing that you claim to know has an impact on your actions and your choices and your decisions. And that's why I love the man of God, Pastor Chris, when he spoke about three kinds of knowledge. Because information comes, but then it becomes knowledge. And it is even knowledge in three ways. You need, to, you, need to, you need to get that message on three kinds of knowledge. So you get a better insight and in-depth on knowledge. Because when you, when you listen to a message, for example, or you even go to classroom, you go, you go to a lecture hall, you go and take lectures in your, from the lecturer in the classroom, that is information coming to you. It, it, it has, you. You don't know it yet. It is when you go back and then you sit down with it and you study it and you digest it, literally. But this time around, you're not using your physical digestive system you're using your mental digestive system. That is the power of your mind. You are breaking it down, analyzing it, scrutinizing it, breaking it down to its pieces. And then it's coming to you. Then it becomes knowledge. You know, I remember an experience that I had when I was in the university. And I, I think I was in my 300 level, yes. And there was a particular course that I was like, I, I just have to know this course. So when I got to the class, when I, when I took the class that day, immediately I went back home and I studied that particular topic until I knew it. By the time I was going to write my exam, I was so excited because I, I had an A in that course. It was a three-unit course and I was excited about it. But I learned something that before you can come to knowledge, there has to be digestion. There has to be digestion. If there is no digestion, there is no knowledge. And so if you want to know, whatever it is that you want to know, you have to ensure that the food is digested. You see, when a person is suffering from indigestion, a, or a person is constipated, a person begins to feel uncomfortable, even though he might have even taken food that is, you know, good for him. Your system, everything about your internal system has to be right. Everything has to be working right. You know, because the, your physical body that you see, it kind of gives you a, an idea of how your mental body works. I mean, your energy body. What, if you remember the episode I spoke about the human soul and that's where the mind lives, yes, you understand what I'm talking about. So... The, your, your inner body, your inner being has its own digestive system and it's in your mind. Your mind does so much. Your mind is a processor. It processes the information. Another word for processing would mean digest. So that's food processing. That is a natural food processing. So you have to process the information so that it, it can become knowledge and that is the way that information can be useful to you. And like I told you earlier, there are different kinds of information. Not all information is beneficiary to you. And it is not every information that should be consumed because there's some information, even when it is digested, it does more harm than good. Even though it is digested, by the time that information gets into your bloodstream, it becomes toxic to your system. And then over time, when you accumulate it, it now becomes something that causes a, 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 some, some sort of disease or ailment in the physical body. In the same way, your physical body can actually experience sickness or illness or disease. It's the same way your spirit can experience it. Your soul can experience it. And it comes when you are digesting the wrong information. Because you can actually digest information that has contents. But those contents can be very toxic to your system. But by the time your, your, your mind processes it and it sits in your system, it would have a negative impact in your life and in your circumstances. I always like to make reference to a lot of episodes on science of the gospel because oftentimes most of the things that we talk about here, they are very, very connected. And I remember when I was talking about um, water molecules and arrangement of circumstances. This information that you digest in your mind, they do arrange your circumstances because your mind is actually in a metaphysical space. It's not in a physical space. And you know, I remember I spoke about quantum physics and energy. 
and how everything is energy. So all that information is going as food and it is entering your circumstances. You might want to check again. What are you eating? And what are you knowing? What are you digesting? Remember, what we're talking about today is the digestive system. Because you're digesting something. And it could be good for you and it could be toxic for you. Or it could be too much for you. There are certain foods that we, we consume that have some chemical composition. And that when that thing becomes dense in our system, it's not good for us. So it's so important that we are mindful. First of all, what we consume is actually first begins with the information. It begins with the food. Remember, remember, I've already given you a similar, a similar picture with food and nutrition. Food is the information. Nutrition is the, is the knowledge. So you you can actually know anything. And the thing about knowledge is this: knowledge can be true or it can be a lie. So because you know doesn't mean what you know is true. You can know something, but it can be a lie. Now that is a toxic thing that you have digested in your system. So, and, and that's why I need you to have a proper understanding of what I'm saying about information and knowledge. You can have knowledge about something, and as in you know it like you know your name. In fact, you know it like you know your, your gender. But that thing that you know, is it true? Is it true? I want you to just think about what I'm saying right now. And we're just going to go on a short break before we wrap up the show. And when we come back, we'll wrap up the show. But this is stuff to meditate on. This is stuff to think about. Just stick with us and don't go away. Welcome to the channel that is all about you. Welcome to Love World XP, dedicated to bringing you the best Christian entertainment. When you are struggling to keep your time correctly, go and examine with the Holy Spirit. Bring on the laughs as you enjoy comedy. We are soldiers, soldiers of the Lord. New songs from the Love World singers that will keep you worshipping always. Every day, my New original drama series. And even generally, generally in life. New talk shows and so much more to keep you in good company. In such a way that it can be a solution to somebody's problem. Plus, we are adding some throwbacks because some shows are so nice you have to watch them twice. The weather is. Love World XP. Entertainment Beyond Borders. Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel, and we have been talking about information versus knowledge. We have actually been talking about the digestive system and the relevance of the digestive system and what the digestive system is. And I said, information is not knowledge. Information becomes knowledge when it is digested. And I also said that information that becomes knowledge may not be true. If you have believed a lie, that is information that was toxic that you digested and it has become knowledge and it is a lie. And so much has come to, the, to people from all around the world. How would you really know the truth? There is one truth. There is one truth that is the most important. There is one truth that is the most important. And it's the truth of God's salvation. It's the truth of God's eternal life. It's the truth of God's gift. That is the first truth any man should know. In fact, that is the first and most important information for any man to have. You know, it's just like when a child is born, the first food he gets is the breast milk from the mother. The breast milk has all the nourishment. That's all you need to eat. Now, all, the, all, and, the all and most important information you should have is the information that eternal life is available. You may have it, you may not have it. If you have it, that means you have done the code. And what is the code? The code is if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. That means you have eternal life. You've done the code. But if you've not done the code, that means you don't have eternal life. And so you need eternal life. And what is eternal life? Eternal life is the life of God. That is, God didn't think it was too big 
for him to share his life with us. Now, that is an ultimate truth, and that is an eternal truth. And how did we get this eternal life? It came because Jesus died and he rose again. He paid the penalty for sin, for your sins. Fool, the ones you committed in the past, the one that you're even thinking about, the one that you don't even know about, he paid the full price. And he gave you the grace to receive the life of God. And what you need to do, just believe what he did. Jesus came to the world, and Jesus is the word of God made flesh. He came in form of a man. He was killed because he gave, he gave his life. He died. He was a sacrifice. He could have decided, he could have decided not to, to hold on to his life and to keep it, but he left it. He let it go. He sacrificed his life for you. And that if you would believe and confess his lordship, you would have eternal life. This, I'm telling you, is food for your spirit, and it is truth. And if you would confess, you would be saved. You would receive this eternal life. Are you ready to receive do you want to receive? It's available. Are you ready? If you are ready, say this prayer after me. You say, oh Lord God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that he died and he was raised by the glory of the Father. I confess with my mouth that today Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Congratulations to you if you just said that prayer. You're born again. Now you have eternal life. Now you can absorb the word of God and digest God's word because God's word has all the nutrients you need. The Bible says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you can grow thereby. The word of God is like the breast milk that the mother gives. That is all the nutrients that you need. And when you absorb the word of God like milk, you will grow so that you can grow. So right now you're just like a newborn baby born into the world. And now you need milk, you need nourishment. And when you, when you absorb that information, it becomes knowledge. And when it becomes knowledge, after you digest it, so that means you need to meditate, you would grow. So... You need to call us. Let us know you give your heart to Christ. You can call the number showing on the screen or you can send us an email. Let us know you got born again. Let us know you give your heart to Christ so that we can help and guide you to help feed you with God's word that would help you grow and become stronger and become better in the kingdom of God. I hope you enjoyed the show today. I had a blast. So now I believe you know the difference between information and knowledge. So if you have not been meditating, this is the time where you get to meditate more. It's very, very possible that you've been going to church for a very long time and then it seems like everything you've been hearing in church is not really working in your life. It's just information. It has to become knowledge. When it becomes knowledge, like Pastor Chris would say, epignosis, knowledge with participation. The word of God has to become knowledge for it to manifest best in your life experience. I had a blast. I had a wonderful time. I hope you did too. We're going to be coming to you next week with an exciting and beautiful topic of science of the gospel. But for now, this is all I can take. I am still your ever excited host, Bookie Bash, signing out. God bless you.